My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. This video is the first out of the next uh, five videos which we are going to talk about uh, REST APIs uh, using Python. So this is going to be a five video playlist, a very short playlist where we are going to make REST APIs uh, using Python Flask. And we'll also talk about uh, what kind of APIs we're going to build, what is REST, what is API, and we'll just cover uh, the basics uh, of building REST APIs in this video. And in the upcoming videos, we'll actually start uh, coding up our APIs using Python. So let me just show you what the final goal or the final API is going to look like. So just give me a second. So, we have our server running uh, and we'll be using Postman. Uh, let me show you what Postman is. So for all our, uh, to check whether our APIs are working or not, we're going to use something called as Postman, which is a collaborative platform for API development. So uh, make sure you have this download. It's free to download this. And the link is postman.com. And you can use this, uh, we'll be using this to actually build our API and see whether the API is working or not. It's pretty simple and pretty easy to use. Let me just show you what it is. And it doesn't take much time usually. And yeah. We're good to go. Awesome. So this is how uh, the API or Postman looks like. And just don't worry about everything else. We'll be looking into all of this a bit later. If you want a dark mode, go for a dark mode. Uh, she looks pretty cool. And let's see what we have. So click on new request. And just, yeah. Just click on new request, which is going to be an untitled request. And uh, now we have our local host running and we are going to develop an API for a to-do list app. So a to-do list app has a lot of features where you can add your tasks to the to-do list. You have, can update your tasks and you can delete your tasks in a to-do list app. So we're going to make an API which handles all of this, uh, handles how to add your tasks, how to update your tasks and delete your tasks, uh, but we'll only be uh, developing the backend of the APIs for it. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's just see all the to-dos which we have. And we have none now, so let's add some. So we add one. And you don't have to worry about what all of this is for now. Uh, I'm just showing you the final stage, so the task. The task is going to be uh, one on one session with Donna on the weekend. And the summary is going to be talk about Python uh, job. Etc. So we have this to do, which you have to complete on the weekend, and we press send, and it's added to our to do list. And uh, now we can go to get and slash to dos and see that it has been added. We can add another one. So let's say two. Uh, let's say subscribe to programming knowledge and with the summary being to go to YouTube and do this and we add this as well. It has been added and to check whether our to do's are there or not we go and see that they are and now let's just uh, see delete for now. So send and let's check whether they deleted or not and as you can see it has been deleted. So this is how our final uh, 
API is going to look like where we can send requests to our uh, URL and we can uh, get the information. So now before we get into the development of uh, APIs, let's just talk about what uh, an API is. So API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, uh, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. So here we are talking with our backend using uh, APIs. So we have made our API to talk to our database where we add our tasks, we update them or delete them. Uh, now each time uh, you use an app like Facebook, uh, you send a message or check the weather on your phone, you are using an API or you're using a way to communicate between two applications. So let us see an example. So when you use an application on your mobile phone, uh, the application uh, connects to the internet and sends the data to, to a server, uh, let's say Facebook. Then the server retrieves the, that data, uh, takes the data, interprets it, Perform some missing reactions and it sends it back to your phone. So this can uh, be an example of creating a post on Facebook. You send the data of your post. The server interprets the data, performs the actions and send it, sends it back to your phone. So then the app uh, that interprets your data and then presents the data in a readable way. So once you create your post, you can see your post on your timeline. And this is what an API is called and this is what happens via an API. Now that we have a very basic understanding of an API, uh, we come to the next concept which is REST API or REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Now this is uh, an architectural style uh, which basically defines a set of constraints to be used while creating these web services. So now these web services uh, have to conform to the REST architectural style and they are called as RESTful web services and they provide uh, interoperability or a communication between the computer systems uh, or your server on the internet. So they allow you uh, to access and manipulate uh, representations using web sources in a uniform and stateless manner. So we'll talk about what stateless means. So all we need to know is that REST is an architectural style which has a set of constraints uh, we need to use when we create these APIs. Now let's see some uh, basic REST concepts. So first is stateless interactions. So a REST service does not use login sessions or store any information on the server. There is no load on the server, uh, but instead the client maintains the information about each resource, uh, which makes REST service easier to use across you know, load balance servers. So if you have multiple servers, uh, where if one server crashes, you can use another server to present your data to the client. Uh, you don't have to store any login sessions on the server or uh, the client will be maintaining all of that. Now, uh, we talked about a set of constraints, right, which uh, we have to follow. So these are those constraints where uh, we have uh, a way to communicate over HTTP, which is the hypertext transfer protocol of the internet. So first is get data. So how do you get data from the server? Next is post data or how do you actually send data to the server, put is how you update the data and delete is how you delete the data from the database. So these are the four things which we are going to uh, have in our API uh, and create and code them out uh, in the next four upcoming four videos and we'll see how this works. So to actually make our APIs in Python and actually write the code for them, we'll be using something called as Flask REST. RESTful. So Flask RESTful is an extension for Flask that adds support for quickly building the REST APIs. So it is a lightweight abstra abstraction that works with your existing uh, object relation mapping libraries. So it works with Flask seamlessly. Uh, it also encourages best practices with minimal setup. So we'll have only a single Python file, uh, just one .api file. We'll be creating everything. And since uh, we already have talked about Flask in our previous players, so we uh, had developed a push-up slogger uh, web app using Flask uh, in the previous players. So once we are familiar with Flask, uh, this should be very easy to pick up. So again, uh, to install Flask RESTful, you have to follow this, pip install Flask RESTful, and also make sure that you have Flask. So pip install Flask as well. And let me just do that right now, just to show you. All that looks like so if we install 
task. Uh, I already have it. So the next thing is to play install flask test for uh, yeah so make sure that you have all of this and you have Python 3 as well. Uh, let me just show you how it's going to look like. So all we are going to have is one database and one API.py file. That's it. So we are going to uh, develop uh, this API, which is a very common example when we start uh, learning about REST APIs in general, how to create them. Uh, one of the most basic examples is a to-do list app or a to-do list API where we can get the APIs, create them, delete them, and it is actually do update as well now. So, but so we have one and let's update it. So now I don't want to update the task or the task is going to be a one-on-one -on -one session with Ronak, but uh, the summary is going to be uh, email him to send the call. And I can click on send. Uh, okay, oh sorry, the server is not open, my bad. Okay, yeah, now the server is open, I'm trying. And yep, now when we see all the tasks which we have, you can see that the summary has been updated. So this is what we're going to do in the next four videos. We're going to first see a hello world application of Flask as full. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to build on top of that to create uh, get, post, put and delete APIs for our test API. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Thank you.